junior men's eight next. And it's the final of the Princess Elizabeth. Poised and ready to go up at Temple Island. Eton College on the Berkshire Station, Scots College Melbourne of Australia on the Buck Station to the right. And there they go, the Australians being urged on by their Cox, who's very animated already, very early in the race. Archie Gill getting involved, the Cox on the Buck Station there. And there is rival in this race, Oliver Perry, the Cox for Eton. Eton College. We know all about winning this event, but this is as good as it gets for junior eights. It is. I mean, these crews have had to do some very tough racing on Friday, Saturday, and to get to this position here, Scotch. Really physical crew, really showing some power, beating both Shrewsbury and St Paul's to get here. And then Radley overturning, then Eaton overturning Radley, and then St Paul's to get to here to race in the final. Well, I think a lot of it will come down to how much it was taken out of these crews when we had to have these tough races. And they know they train lots, but they're young guys. It is interesting, isn't it, how much the semi-finals and the heats have taken out of them over the last couple of days. Scotch College, Melbourne, and Eton neck and neck in the early stage of this Princess Elizabeth final. As Adrian mentioned, Scotch College beating St Paul's School off the Buck Station yesterday. That's an interesting one as well. If you are racing off the same station in the semi-final and the final, that can sometimes give you a little edge. Yeah, you have confidence that the station is you'd be happy to go on there because you've done the work before. I mean, Mark Fangen Hall is coaching that Eton crew. They came fifth at national schools and they were in the end of May, and they were devastated of that result. And, and the, the boys and him have done a fantastic job to get past the school at like Radley and be in a position now to try and win the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. And Scotch, from what I heard talking on the towpath, was that they've led all the races comfortably by a length or so all season. And this is the first time both Shrewsbury and St Paul's pushed them to overlap. So it's the most pressure they've had in a run into a final. This is, They'll either give them confidence or it won't. Yeah, very different questions will be asked of this Scotch boat in the next couple of minutes. Eton College in the light blue to the right of your picture. They beat Shipplate yesterday and they were on the Buck Station, they're on the Bark Station today. So different questions for them. But having got out of Temple Island, actually once you're into the race, it perhaps makes less difference. It's the start where that previous experience can really count, I guess. Yeah, it's a bit more tricky getting onto the booms when you're on the Buckinghamshire Station. But here, Shrew I mean, here, Eton seems to have moving out a little bit on Scotch College. Um, I mean, both crews here have pedigree winning this event. Um, Scotch won this event in 2017. And I guess they only really travel over here when they know they're going to have a fast crew. Yeah, and Eton won it in 2016, 2014 and 2010. So and three quite, wins in the last 10 years. And maybe quite a few more going back in I'm history. Beyond that 10 years, absolutely. So uh, Eton so, know all about winning this event. So an interesting parallel that one of the house, the, the headmaster at Scotch was a former Eton housemaster. So maybe he took some of the secrets over with him to help him. But here Eton moving out to almost a length. Yeah. That's a, that's a great, brave effort for them after what they had to do the ship like yesterday. What a great performance so far with the boys from Eton School. So far, it is early in the race still, and that is a brave move. Scotch will be keeping a wary eye on them. And Scotch do look like it's it's a bit heavy. Yeah, like a little bit laboured, isn't it? It does. They, they're, and they're, I think they're so used to leading. I think this is probably the first time they've been led. And that could possibly be a thing they've got under the skin of the boys they're racing against. And Eton, long rhythm there, really showing some great poise. But we've had some eights row from three quarters of length down before. And, like you said, there's still quite a bit to go. I've seen all the Scotch College races, this boat here, and they've looked like kind of spring in their step, high energy, I would describe it as, it, so far. And then suddenly today, it just looks a little bit more level. Now, that might be because they're coming second at this stage, and we haven't seen that yet in this regatta, and perhaps they'll have something to produce in a few minutes' time. But it's amazing, isn't it, when uh, the days tick by, toll that can take on the body. Yeah, and that's one of the hardest things, I think, for these younger younger athletes in the, in the Princess Elizabeth, is that the level of competition is so close that during the week they have to have quite a few hard races, and they haven't got quite the training background, the years of experience that some of the elite athletes have to be able to be robust enough. Managing your way through a week, which, of course, the senior internationals are so used to, aren't they, with the World Cups and the World Championship regattas, they have to be able to manage themselves through the week. Exactly, exactly. And also, if you have to race hard earlier in the week, it is just exhausting. You can't just race hard all the time. But here, Scotch not letting go. Still having overlap there. Coming past the mile post. 
Still quite a few minutes to go. Let's see if Scotch have got anything left. They're definitely decreasing that lead in this stretch of the race, Scotch. And I wonder if we'll have another response from the local schoolboys, Eton. Ten miles away from where we sit right here at Henley. The regatta for them, and Scotch are doing a really good job here, of not only keeping contention, but worrying and pounding Eton. Eton have responded again, haven't they? They're pushing on and trying to keep that length lead. They really are. They sort of, Scotch got a bit, seems like Eton have pushed to respond to that. Can Scotch do anything now to get themselves back on terms and really put that Eton crew under pressure? Now with this sort of crew behind you, if you can put enough pressure, you can affect the other crew. Maybe they start rowing a bit short, but it looks, it looks like Eton now have just done another effort. Maybe they've just worked out to clear water. Eton on the Berkshire station. Pooley in the bow seat. Burgess Watson, Watson Gandhi, Hodgson, Shakespeare, Nunyon, Swidler, Pearson, and Oliver Perry, who mentioned the Cox earlier on. They are nearly there in front of Stewart's now in the Princess Elizabeth. This will be a fourth win in 10 years for Eton College in the Princess Elizabeth. And they have worn the length lead. What a great place to sit in front of Stewart's on finals day at Henley Raw Regatta. Scotch College Melbourne have not got any answers. They have run out of gas at a crucial moment, having qualified for this final so well. Today it's been a step too far. And a big performance from Eton College in the Princess Elizabeth. They will win that race. And they've done a superb job. Listen to the result. Watch the Cox there. Look, serious celebrations from Oliver Perry and the rest of the boat. They are ecstatic with their Henley win against Scotch College in the Princess Elizabeth. What an emotional performance there from Eton. You can see the reaction yeah. again, how much they've done that on, on pure passion. Says it all, doesn't it? When you see reactions like that after the finish line of uh, Scotch College. Well, for most of this week, they were so impressive, and today they just didn't have the same sparkle, did they? Just whether they had too much racing or whether Eaton just got it right today on the day. You can see the contrast in the emotion, the, the joy of the victory, and the actual devastation when you don't win. So tough, one-on-one -on -one racing. Cox above all, it seems. Oliver Perry still full of energy to celebrate. Took them a moment to get lined up on the pontoons at Temple Island. There's a wind buffeting the boats around today, but once they were off and running, Scotch College settled into a good rhythm early in the race, and for the first half, it was pretty much nip and tuck. But then Eaton forged ahead. A really good move from them mid-race, and they never let up. They maintained that length lead. Powerful row from them. Eton College win it again. Princess Elizabeth here at Henry Raw Regatta. Great scenes of celebration, jubilation for Eton and disappointment for Scotch College of Melbourne, Australia.